It's Shalom. It's your brother Malcolm coming at you with another lesson. Um, and I'd like to first and foremost give all praises, glory, and honor unto Yahweh Bashim Abishai. Double honors unto the apostles of GMS, the true leaders and elders um, of all of Israel that are on earth today. Um, and salutations to the Akim out there on the four corners of the earth that do this work in truth and sincerity. Risking their lives and their freedom to do so because we are indeed targets, man. We are the biggest opposers, enemies, and the revealers of the truth about the nation of Edom, which is at the head of the New World Order. And what this lesson is going to be about is Catholic lies, man. All right, because that is one of the main vehicles that they used to push uh, Edomite superiority, man, to change, you know, to uh, uh, change the truth, you know, by the doctrine up, changing of scriptures, um, Changing the meaning of words, you know, the, the 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 and mainly by changing the imagery of the the heavenly beings, man. When they when they started doing art, to uh, to 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 push their doctrine, man. Because if you go to uh, you go back to prior to the Renaissance, all the way from from the 13th century, all the way back to the uh, third, fourth, you know, second, third, first century. The images of 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 the art in the Bible, of the entities of the Bible, all kind of look like this. Okay? This is what you see when you do your research, your diligent research. This is what is all over Europe, where white people are supposedly from. So explain to me why they have these images all over their country. You know, painted on walls. You know, painted in churches. Statues. They couldn't destroy them all. That was the job of Michelangelo and Leonardo da Vinci. Their job was to whitewash the Bible, man, as it is written in uh in 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 the Book of Maccabees, uh, three and forty eight. Matter of fact, let's let's go ahead and read that, you know, because that's what this is. It's gonna be a very very quick lesson. Um, but the spirit jumped on me to do this after watching, you know, a couple videos. I was watching uh the brothers in the Mississippi camp and and some and uh. I was watching the brothers in the Atlanta camp, and the Spirit just jumped on me to do this. But this is uh, uh, 1 Maccabees 3 and 48. And they laid open the book of the law, which is the Bible, wherein the heathen sought to paint the likenesses of their images. So it went from images like this that were recorded all in Italy and all throughout Rome, especially in the catacombs. And they will take to explain things that took place in the first, second, third century or in BC time, they use Renaissance art, not the not the actual art of the time period. They use this man. And this man, Michelangelo and Leonardo da Vinci worked for him. They were his employees. And he became the new face of the new Jesus Christ. This is Cesare Borgia. Alright? And Cesare Borgia uh, was a homosexual, you know, he was a murderer. He was a pedophile. Um, he was he committed adultery repeatedly. He uh, he was he was an incestuous, you know, bloodthirsty person, man. And this man is the image that they use to be your new Lord and Savior. So, and all you satanic Hispanics and all you stupid Edomites and you you re, and you tarred Negroes who have those images all over your houses and on your bodies, and in the form of church uh, 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 of necklaces and all that sort of thing, man. You're going way, way off, man. So let's uh, get a couple quick scriptures more to uh, solidify what I'm saying, man. Because, you know, it's time for you to wake up, man. And people always screaming, well, color don't matter. Then why you have to lie about it? It does matter, man. Because America was all about the indoctrination of, of, of Edomite superiority to all his uh, citizens, man. All right. This is the book of uh, Timothy, the first chapter. I mean, the second chapter, the fifth verse. For there is one God, I'm going to read it verbatim first. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men. The man, uh, Christ Jesus, and which is even hard to say, man. I don't, I don't even like saying that name, man. I'm like uh, Apostle Tahar, all right, because that's not his name. That is an, uh, that's, and that's going to be a part of this, too. Those are the Catholic lies. His name is Hamashiach Yahweh Shai. That's how this was should say. Hamashiach, even the fake Jews will let you know that. And basically, you know, uh, 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 Hamashiach, now my mind is going blank, man, uh, means the anointed one. Basically, that's where the word Christ or Christos come from. So the anointed one is Hamashiach, and, uh, and Jesus means he, he saves. He's a savior, you know. That's just the, 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 
the the Greek way of saying Yahweh Shai, man. All right, or saying the name Joshua, because Joshua, you know, and you, and you, and Jesus is the same name, man. And the scriptures to prove that. All right. Um, next scripture. Let's get uh, uh, Matthew uh, twenty-three, verses seven and nine. So Matthew twenty-three, verses seven and nine. Okay. Warn unto you scribes, this is yeah, Matthew 23, 7 and 9, Salakia. But yeah, warn to you scribes anyway. Uh and greetings in the markets. And to be called by men, Rabbi, Rabbi. Alright. But be ye not called Rabbi, for one is your master, even Hamashiach, and all ye are brethren. And this was to the message to the Israelites, man. Not to all people. Alright? And and call no man your father upon earth. For one is your father, which is in heaven. So you run around talking about father this and father that and father this. No, the only man you refer to as father on earth is your physical father, man. Or if you were raised by a man who who was your stepfather, you know, and he raised you like his own child, you know, spent money and time on you, then that man would be, you know, like a spiritual father or, or the or the men that brought you up in this truth. They're like your spiritual fathers. You don't actually have to call them that, but you can give them that kind of respect. All right. OK, so the Bible forbids that you you refer to someone as father, father. But what do the Catholics do? Mm -hmm. uh, next scripture, let's go into the name, man. This is a. Uh, Acts 4 and 12. Let's go to Acts. Acts 4 and 12. Neither is there any salvation in any other, for there is one name under heaven given among men, whereby ye must be saved. And that name is Yahweh Shai. You have to know the name of Yahweh Shai, Yahweh and Yahweh Shai, man. All right? You know, the Son in the name of the Father, man. All right? And by worshiping Yahweh Shai, you worship the Father by default, man. Because he gave all power over to the Son. He gave him control over everything. So by worshiping Yahweh Shai, all right, exalting him and praising his name, okay, you worship the, the, the Father by default, man. All right? But I, I count it wise to still include the Father, to always praise the Father. Praise praise the Father in the name of Yahweh Shai, man. That's the wisest thing to do. Okay? Um, let's go to Proverbs 30 and 4, man. This is uh, Proverbs. 30 and verse 4. Who have ascended up into heaven or descended? Who have gathered the wind in his fists? Who have bound the waters in a garment? Who have established all the ends of the earth? What is his name? And what is his son's name? If thou can tell. All right, because it was a mystery, man. Because it wasn't given to everyone. All right, it wasn't given to all people, man. That's why it's a mystery. And now. That name is is known. All right, let me check on a quick precept before I read it. I don't want to say something that didn't have to. Uh... All right, you know, go back. Let me just check. But yeah, the 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 Lord in the Bible basically was giving you a test, man. He was challenging you. He, so basically what that's telling you is that why would you, if the if the book, if the name, okay, for example, the letter J did not exist prior to 1634. That is a fact, an undeniable fact, man. To say otherwise is foolish and stupid. There was no letter J. All right? So that cancels out Jehovah and Jesus automatically. Automatically. All right? Which is why it was written in the book of Proverbs, what is his name? And what is his son's name? OK. 
okay? Now that precept really don't match what we're talking about. All right, um, one more quick scripture, man. Uh, actually, two. I'm going to get uh, Acts 26, uh, just to prove a point, and then I'm going to get Zechariah. All right, this is Acts 26, just to prove a point that when the Lord spoke his name, it was spoken in Hebrew and not in uh, and not in any other language, man. Yeah, it says, in, this is Acts 26 and started at 14. And when we were all fallen to the earth, I heard a voice speaking unto me and saying in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And I said, who art thou, O Lord? And he answered and said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. All right. But you got to remember, he it said, he said unto me, going back up to 14, and he's, and he's saying in the Hebrew tongue. So this whole line right here, which is in the red, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou? It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. All right? So when he spoke to him, and then in verse 15, he said, and, and Paul said, who art thou, O Lord? And he said, I am Hamashiach Yahushai. I am Yahushai, basically. So he said it in Hebrew, man. So the Lord does not speak. He does not acknowledge the Greek. This proves it. The Greek is not acknowledged by who you call Jesus Christ, man. Okay. Now let's uh, let's go to Zechariah. Finish this up. Well, you know what? I, I, I went to Zechariah, but I, I turned to Zephaniah. So let's read that. This is Zephaniah 3 and 9. For then will I turn to the people of pure language that they may all call upon the name of Yahweh to serve him in one consent. So you got to be able to call on Yahweh and Yahweh Shai with one consent, man. So, I mean, you can't be Jehovah here and you can't be Jehovah Jireh over here or Jesus over here or Emmanuel over here. It's, it's, it's one name, man. One consent, and that's Hamashiach Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. All right. Um, one more scripture. We're done. Okay, it's uh, Zechariah fourteen nine, and this is the last one. Um, Zechariah 14.9 And Yahweh shall be king over all the earth in that day. Shall there be one Lord and his name one. Alright, so you're not going to have all these different and all these incorrect names and it must be called in Hebrew. And it's not uh, Yahweh and Yahshua. Those are Yiddish uh, uh, perversions. Alright, so with that I'd like to say all praise, glory, and honor be unto Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. You know. Salutations to the Akim that are doing this work in truth and sincerity. All right. And the rest of you really don't matter. Shalom.